Welcome to Floss's first video interview and the kicks off with a bang. My name is Josiah Ediji and I'm here with Super Eagles Forward, Regian Igalu. Thank you very much for having us. And you're welcome. Beautiful home, man. How are you doing? How's life? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm good, thank you. Thank God. Uh, so let's kick things off. Um, how Talk us to me, your journey, you know, from the beginning, obviously, born and born and raised in Lagos. And um, talk us through kind of how everything started out, you know, when you got to the point where you thought, okay, I can make it as a professional footballer. Uh, well, I would say it all started in Ajegule, you know. I I was born and raised in Ajegule, and then, um, you know, every kid's dream there was to play football, you know. Like, there's a saying in Ajegule, you say, you either become a footballer, a musician, or a criminal. So your destiny is in your hand. You have to choose, you know, because uh, it's a ghetto and uh, you have to survive, you know. So I started playing from street football when I was very young with barefoot and all that. Sometimes you got injured, your toes would peel off and all that. You fall down on the on the yeah. on on the bare road like that. Your body will, will, will peel off, you know. So it was not easy in the beginning, you know. And then from there to primary school, secondary school, football and all that, you know. And then from there, we joined a club side, like an academy training with them, you know. Um, there you don't have people that support you, you pay for everything, you know, like we call what we call training dues. You have to pay to, for training. You have to buy your own water, you drink. You have to buy your own football shoes, your jerseys. You have to do everything yourself, you know. I know many footballers today, they didn't get the opportunity to be where I am. So today, because they didn't have people that supported them in back in the beginning, you know. That's why anytime I do interview when I talk, I said after God in my life today is my mom, you know. Uh, because she was there for me. She gave me everything. Not like she has it, you know, but with a little cure she has, she was selling like what they call ice water and all those things, sachet water and all that with the little gains and all that. You know? She did her best to make things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes she do, she does not have enough, you know, but I will cry and cry and cry, and like banging the door and I'm sleep then. It, she will be forced to give me, you know. I remember before we traveled to Abekuta to go and play with a team there, Julius Benga, yeah. that it picked me to remain with them, you know. I remember Three other good players could not make that trip because of transport, you know. Wow. That night I cried for my mom and all that gave me the money. And that's where yeah, I am today okay. because if I did not go to that trip, I wouldn't be able Still to start my career with Jesus Beggar. And from there, scouts will not be able to see me and take me out of the country, you know. The journey is long. If I say we should keep saying that, you know. <laughs> 20 minutes, one hour is not enough. But I'm grateful to God today for where I am. And I'm happy. I've traveled far and wide. I have played in 11 clubs. Oh, we're going to talk six about or seven this. different countries, 18 years professional football, and I'm still going, you know. It's, it's the grace of God, you know. So sometimes. People by the boy, as you say. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes when I call God, people think I'm crazy, you know, because it's not because I'm, I'm the best in the position I'm, I'm, I'm playing in or I'm the best in what I do, you know. But I'm just lucky and by God's grace, I'm the mercy of God. That's why I wear him because I know if you if you if you go to a jungle to the dice, there is more player ten times better than me, you know. But I'm always happy from from Jules Berger then I I played in Norway. I traveled out, out in two thousand and seven from Nigeria to Norway. Uh I started my career outside in Nigeria, like my professional career outside Nigeria, I'm back in 2007 with Linoslo in Norway. Yeah. Then from there to Udinese in Italy, from Udinese in Italy to Granada in Spain, to Granada in Spain, I came back on loan to one team in Italy called Cesena. 
from there back to Granada, from there to Watford. I want to talk to you about that time at Watford because I remember you. That's when I got excited. You know, me at the Premier League, I watched the Premier League. Mm. I was extremely excited to see your link up with Troy Dini. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you, how did you guys do it? Like, you are both kind of similar style of play, most mm. people would say. Well, you lit on the Premier League, and you, you know it was was he would you would you call him your favorite striker to play with? Yeah, he's in my career, yeah. I would say uh, he's one of the best strikers I've played with because the the, the partnership between both of us uh, is it was crazy. You know, we, we were defenders ninth men. You know, we were defenders ninth men because Trondini is very strong. Trodini is very strong, he's, uh, he's very physical, and me, I'm faster and I'm more technical. Mm -hmm. So what we do, Trodini will always go up to bully the defenders and I'm more yeah, there for the flick on, on the flick on, I'm more yeah. the behind, you know. So we scored a lot of goals between us, you know. So he's a great striker, I had so much fun. I think what I did in the Premier League with one for then, I think that's what keeps my career and going to today. I, I think so. I think you made it. I like made a big impression. 16 goals yeah. in my first season in the Premier League. It's not easy for a team like Watford. I only struggle for relations and, and all that, you know. So I had a good time in Watford. And uh, from there, I moved to China, to Changchun in China. I played three years in China. Yeah. Yeah. I want to I wanna even ask you about that. So he went to China kind of around the time where they were revolutionizing their league, trying to bring a few stars. Yes. I know Oscar, you know, a few players went here and there. And you know, he was also going to Saudi Arabia uh, to play in the Saudi Pro League. Yeah, Al Hilal and Al Shabaab. Do you think what Saudi, you know, what Saudi Arabia are trying to do? Is it, you know, what, why is it different to what China, you know, tried and, you know, most people think it wasn't, it didn't work out or they didn't think the China experiment didn't work out. What do you think, you know, with Saudi Arabia bringing all these stars to play, do you know, what, what, why do you think it's different and do you think it's sustainable? Do you these guys? They, they want to grow their link. They want their link to be well known. You know, even this league and all that is like investment to you understand. Premier League make money from the only because of people watching it and the TV right and all that, you know. So they want to create something like that, even though it's not going to be bigger than Premier League. They're attracting star stars to the league, you know, they have the money. Saudi Arabia is one of the richest countries in the world, you know. Cool. I mean, they can't afford it, why not? If it is your brother that they want to put that kind of money, you say, I'm not going to say no, I'm going to say no. So, <laughs> yeah, no, yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> so they have the money, so let them build the link the way they want to build it. I don't criticize them. Even when China was doing that, I don't criticize them. I benefit them from it. Oh. So I like scored goals. I mean, you did yeah. So, so you made an. I I feel it's it's for me. It's okay. I don't have an issue with that. Yeah, that's good. And I want to talk about your time at Manchester United. I said I don't know if you know this. Uh, you may do, but you're actually the first Nigerian to play for Manchester United. Of course, I know. And I'm an Arsenal fan, so no, no, no. So we have to stop it. Okay. No <laughs> chance. I, 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 I'm gonna say I'm an Arsenal. Uh, all my security jackets. But, but, yeah. but I. I felt a sense of pride as a fellow Nigerian watching you play for my United. That was when for me, um, let's say I didn't mind United getting the odd results, providing you scored the goals. Mm. Talk us through what it was like to play for, you know, arguably the biggest club in England. And what's the, what's the difference between playing for my United and playing for anywhere else? Because for me, you know, you look at Old Trafford, even Carrington, the players, everything, history of the club. But what is it from your perspective? For me, it's the biggest club in the world, you know. You, you, you see it outside, you say Manchester United, but when you're inside, you know that you play for the biggest club. Like, they have this big history, they have... It's, it's difficult to explain it, you know. Uh, First time driving inside Carrington training ground and all that, it was a dream come because I'm a Man United fan when I was, when I was, since when I was little, you know, even till now, you know. So that dream came to fulfillment because not everybody dream comes to pass, you know. My, I fulfill my dream, you know, because I could remember when I used to pay money to go and watch Man United play, you know. And they are there on the now, <laughs> I was there playing in Old Trafford. It's, it's a dream that you can't explain, you know. It's, I don't know, sometimes when I see that, I want to explain it is till today, I still feel that gross bomb when I talk about it, you know, because it's not just play, but you achieve a dream, oh. you understand? Playing for the, not just the biggest club, your dream club, the club is support right from where you are, when you start knowing about football and all that, you know, and scoring in your travel, yeah. 
if it's crazy, the animals <laughs> there in Fort Trafford, you know, sitting down on the bench, watching the crowd, watching the fans and all that, you know, it's crazy. It's amazing. Sometimes I go back to watch some of the videos and all that. I just go, what was your favorite goal? Wow. What was your favorite goal for Man United? The so favorite goal was not in Old Trafford, you know, okay? It was the Europa Cup game. As a little ice cream, you I turned, turned like this and that. From that food? No. Yeah, the lay, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that goal still remains one of my best goals in my career, you know. And scoring it for Manchester United even make it more sweeter, you know. That's good to hear. Um, so, like you said, you played for 11 clubs. Uh, you played with lots of players under and lots of managers. Mm. Who would you say the most talented player? Who would you say is the most talented player you played with? Maybe that most people may not even know. Uh, and why? I would say Antonio Toton Di Natale. I played with him in the Udinese. Okay. I've played with a lot of great players, but I would yeah. say him because he, he, he can score free kick, penalties, score with both legs, score from any angle. He's very intelligent. Yes. So, so, oh, yeah, sure. but he's extremely technical. And yeah, <laughs> his techniques is out of this world. And the way mm. he goes through defenders and score goals, it's crazy, you know. So I would say, full. That's a good, that's an interesting one. Mm. <laughs> Let's bring things back home here yeah, in Nigeria. Um, you've had a good sunny career for the Super Eagles. We've been proud watching you. Um, we want to know, you know, obviously you came back. We had that disappointing, you know, half a spell not to make the World Cup. What are, you know, what are your thoughts on the state of things in Nigeria? Now you have an academy, the Gallo Football Academy. Uh, we know a lot of people are trying to push grass school football. So what do you think is the state of things, you know, in, in respect to grass and football and how can we make things better just as a country in general? I know you're playing your part, but what can we do? Um, or what advice do you have from people trying to make ways? It's difficult, you know, because uh, first of all, the economy in Nigeria is it's not okay. I mean, the economy is not okay. People are not benefiting from something. It's difficult for them to put money in it, you know. Like me, I've been running my academy since 2017 spending money but i'm not getting a dime it's not anybody that can do it in here yeah. and now I, I i thank god i'm still playing at active football you know i can be able to finance it you know but what about when i finish playing yeah so it's difficult that's why you see without so many grassroots because people cannot afford to put what they will use to feed themselves and their family into academies in it because if we had a lot of academies and people started the young, Nigeria, we are, we are talented, we have their talent, we have great players, you know, we, we have to catch them young, you know. Yeah. But, you know, if the head is not good, then it's impossible, so we have to pray for a better structure. Better move towards it, yeah. you know, better structure, because it's, it's, there's, there's enough an individual can do, you know. Yeah. You can't, you can't do everything, you can't do everything. But thankfully, you're doing your part, and we pray that you continue to do so. Like you said, it's not easy. Mm. Not everybody can do that, invest in something, not even expecting or not getting anything mm. back. So please, I, 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 as a football fan, as a Nigerian, I'm praying that you still please continue to, to play the part that you're playing. We don't take it for granted. No. Um, so again, back to, back to Saudi. Uh, you know, you are al Hilal most recently. You won the league there. You finished as top goal scorer in the league. What's what's the next step for you? Um, my contract finished with uh, Al Hilal, and uh, I had a good time there. I had a good time in Saudi Arabia, and hopefully, by God's grace, for next week, I will you know my next destination. You know, maybe have of us from Saudi and have of us from other countries. You know, so I will study what you know, what's the best for you, best for me, and we we'll go because yes. I think I. I still have that strength to move to stick playing for. Oh, we know you're still good enough for sure. <laughs> of we are yeah, still good enough. I call it a day. So I will study the offer and see which one is best for me and then God will direct me to go. Amen. So if we see you potentially in 2026 World Cup, if we play like, yeah, make it to you, is that in can we can we can we can we bank on that? We are still in I know but so I was looking in, in, in the next three years time. Yeah. And me I'm saying I wanna even finish football in the next two ah. <laughs> So we'll see, only God knows the future. Only God sees I already know. For me I just wanna enjoy the game day after day. 
enjoy the life in the after day because nobody knows tomorrow, you know. Cool. So I woke up every morning, I thank God and continue my day, be happy that moment because you don't know the next moment. So every minute, every second of your night to make it count is yeah, make it count because it's more important than tomorrow. Yeah. Today you're living is more important than tomorrow. Yeah. Worry about tomorrow, but you, nobody knows you yeah. get you have to live in live, live the life now and enjoy it. So that's what I try to do. I try to be happy, live my life today happy and God knows tomorrow and I know he has had good tomorrow. Oh. Thank you. And one last question. What is sports to you in one word? For me, sport is life. I eat sport, I drink sport, I see sport. Yeah. I play sport. I do everything because for me, without sports, I won't be where I am today. I won't achieve everything I've achieved today. So for me, sport is life. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out and it really was a great and insightful interview. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. You're welcome. Thank you.